recordings. Good evening and welcome to our 2021 Ruth Foot Lectures. My name is David Caden and I'm the Senior Minister of First Congregational Church of Ithaca. And it's my honor to introduce this year's speaker. But before I do, let me say a few words about the Foot Lectures at our church. The Ruth Foot Workshop on Applied Christianity, which is what it's called, was established in 1992 by the late Robert H. Foote. He was a longtime member of First Congregational Church of Ithaca, and he established the workshop on applied Christianity in memory of his wife, Ruth. The money he gave has supported these lectures almost every year since. Uh, COVID prevented us from hosting the lectures last year, but fortunately, through the wonders of technology, we can offer them this year on Zoom. The purpose of the workshop, according to the specifications in the endowment fund, is, quote, to annually bring a distinguished theologian, pastor, church leader, missionary, or other recognized Christian authority or worker in the field of Christian ethics and service to others to First Congregational Church of Ithaca for a time of study and worship. The invited guest will lecture on the relationship between Christian faith and serving others particularly as faith addresses current issues and challenges of the day. The foot lectures are open to the public. They're supposed to be educational, empowering, inspirational, challenging, and make a contribution to building a better ecumenical relationship between First Congregational Church of Ithaca and our ecumenical faith community partners. This year's speaker is Kenneth McIntosh. He is the author of more than a dozen books, as well as an educator and spiritual mentor. His Scots heritage, degrees in education and theology, and travels in Celtic lands inspire his writing. Kenneth is currently the pastor of Hanioi United Church of Christ. And in addition to being an expert on Celtic Christianity and spirituality, he enjoys hiking, collecting fountain pens, walking and building labyrinths, and working on his vintage VW. Tonight's talk, Every Bush Aflame with God, Worship Wedded with Spirituality, is the first of a three-part series, and we are delighted to welcome Kenneth tonight. Thank you, David. It's a privilege to be asked to present as a part of the Ruth Foote Lectures, and I have never actually set foot inside of First Congregational uh, UCC Church of Ithaca. I've walked by it. I love Ithaca. My wife and I enjoy going for concerts and other cultural events there. Um, I've appreciated getting to know you, David. I can tell your church has excellent leadership. And I know that uh, I know Felicity Wright, one of your members, and if she is typical of your church, you must have a wondrous congregation indeed. I also want to say a welcome this evening to others who are joining from my own church, Honeyoy United Church of Christ, from other members of the New York United Church of Christ Conference, um, from members of the dispersed neo-monastic community of Aden and Hilda. I see we have a couple of UK members joining us tonight. I, my wife and I are also part of the community of Aiden and Hilda, so it's great. And so whoever you are, whatever form of belief or faith you profess, wherever you are on life's journey, welcome to this evening's presentation. If you'll give me one moment, I'm going to share screen and then make an adjustment and uh, we'll, we'll be doing that. That's the second here. In the beginning, before all else, God was and is and will be the high king of the world mightier than any power, fiercer than any dragon, gentler than any child, brighter than the sun of heaven, holier than any saint, more loving than any mother. So begins an ancient Irish rendering of God's work at creation. It composed in the ninth century, the ever new tongue is the name of this poem that weaves together the book of Genesis, Irish bardic stories, 
and a mystic text from Africa. The ever new tongue, the way that diverse elements from around the globe come together can be likened to the knotwork that you see on screen that characterizes Celtic visual art. Knotwork patterns blend diverse colors, shape, and symbols into a delightful artistic whole. And in the same way, ancient Celtic Christianity seamlessly blended stories, prayers, and global influences, all infused with love for God and for nature. One of the best known elements of Celtic spirituality, nature mysticism, is especially relevant for the ultimate crisis that now confronts humanity. To restore the health of our planetary home, we must integrate spiritual understanding alongside science. As the late great geologian Thomas Berry said, we will go into the future as a single sacred community or else we will all perish in the desert. Before we go any further into my subject matter tonight, I want to invite you to engage in a brief guided meditation. This is a deep time meditation. And so I'm going to invite you um, at this hour of the evening, you uh, may well fall asleep if you uh, uh, get too relaxed. So uh, if there's any good meditation, uh, good to sit up with uh, our backs uh, straight and place your hands where you're not very aware of them, but you're very comfortable. So you can be both alert and relaxed. I invite you to uh, begin by closing your eyes and taking a few deep breaths in and out. And I invite you to be aware of your body, any sensations of hot or cold, pleasant tingling or discomfort, whatever you might speak, you might, might feel. Just be aware of the field of your body as a whole. If you're familiar with mindfulness meditation, this is similar beginning. And I want to begin with a question. How old are you? How old are you? I don't mean how many years since the date of your birth. That's just one construct, rather an artificial one at that. But we're going to think more deeply. How old are you? I want you to take a moment and be aware of whatever sensations you feel through your skin. Maybe you feel your hands touching. Maybe you feel the clothing that you're wearing. Maybe it's warm or cold in the room. Maybe you feel your back and your bottom on a chair or your feet on the floor. Just think of your skin for a moment. Your entire thin covering of skin completely renews every 27 days. Monthly. All your skin cells die and are replaced. How old are you? The outer covering of your being is only 27 days old. I want you to think and feel if you can about any moisture in the room. Maybe you recently had a cup of coffee or a drink of water. Maybe 
it's been raining all day where I am. Maybe you can feel the moisture in the air. Think about the water molecules around you. They circulate, you know, all the water in our atmosphere, in the ocean, in the rivers and lakes. They all swap molecules back and forth. It's a constant state of water cycle. Your body, your body you're feeling right now is 55 to 60% water. Try and imagine that if you can. Try and feel all that moisture that is you. How old are the water molecules that make up you? They date from when our planet cooled four and a half billion years ago. How old are you? More than half of you is four and a half billion years old. Now you are understanding this because you're using your brain. Your brain, like an amazing supercomputer. Right now, your brain has a hundred billion neurons, more or less. Approximately the same number of neurons in your mind as the number of stars in our galaxy. Now, each neuron works with tiny traces of gold that enable it to send and receive signals and communicate and think. Where do those rare elements of your brain come from? They came from exploding neutron stars. 10 billion years ago. How old are you? The part of you that allows you to think is 10 billion years old. And there's more. You are interconnected with all of life, woods, creatures, they, you, this world, everything living on this earth are carbon-based life forms. So your whole body is made up of chains of carbon atoms. Feel the totality of your body. Feel the tiniest bits you can imagine of your body. Now think of all those elementary particles, all of those elementary particles that make up you blipped into existence at the moment which scientists call the singularity, more popularly known as the Big Bang. All of the trace elements that are in you were created along with mass, energy, life, gravity, all the constituents of reality, all blipped into existence when 13.7 billion years ago. How old are you? You are 13.7 billion years old. And you are the image of God who formed you. And in the divine, you live and move and have your being. You are made of star stuff and God stuff. And how old is God? Infinite, timeless and infinite in dimensions. How old are you? Thank you, oh God, that we are fearfully 
and wonderfully made. Amen. Amen.